Happy holidays, everybody, and Tony here, and I'm going to be ranking the four Fresh Prince of Bel-Air Christmas episodes. It's been two years since I tackled each and every one of them individually. However, the time is ripe for me to rank each of them according to which I liked and enjoyed to the one that I truly loved, cherished, and Hold within my heart the most. So let's get cracking. And receiving the bronze medal is I O oh Baby Baby from season six. This episode isn't explicitly a Christmas episode, as it is also from the very last season of The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but it was still quite entertaining. It's not necessarily a very Christmassy episode, unless you count Carlton and Ashley arguing about whose Christmas tree decoration is the best, especially when they end up squabbling and bickering throughout the entire episode, Jeffrey getting all drunk on eggnog, and Grandma Hattie preparing all of those Christmas cookies and Christmas treats, especially when it comes to her famous pot roast. And of course, Will getting his humongously massive stocking ready for Santa Claus. The main meat of this episode is Hillary's career aspirations, especially where her talk show is concerned. Yes, her talk show has been gaining in national ratings. However, considering that her episode deals with pregnant women and new motherhood, there is a young woman falling pregnant by the name of Julie who gives birth to her baby. And this makes Hillary question what really is the next step for her. After much reflection, as well as visiting Julie in the hospital, specifically in the maternity ward, she decides that she wants to become a mother and even have her own children. The news is shocking to both Grandma Hattie and Uncle Phil, and they're just as surprised that she would make such a rash decision. And Hillary realizing that her decision of wanting to be a mother, let alone to have children, all comes flying to her face. When she visits the fertility clinic, she ends up seeing Jazz. And we all know how much Hillary cannot stand Jazz. And in this particular season, Jazz seems to still have the slight hots for Hillary after being conveniently divorced from Jewel in season 5. But that's kind of a whole nother can of worms to deal with much later, as this is a recurring joke that ended up being rehashed in season 6. And even Hillary's dinner date with Dr. Dwayne, played by Dwayne Martin of a different world fame, doesn't really go too well as she asks him a lot of awkward questions and he does feel uncomfortable being with her. Not to mention the confusion goes all over Hillary's head and she starts realizing that being a mother isn't really all that's cut out to be, especially considering that she has to be in a loving relationship, has to consider marriage, as well as considering starting her own family. Considering that Hillary has all the maturity of a freshly baked birthday cake. The selling point for this episode was Hillary's little heart-to-heart -heart with Uncle Phil, and that was a very touching moment between James Avery and Karen Parsons, considering that behind the scenes, Karen Parsons always remembered James Avery for calling her daughter, and for taking his role as a father figure seriously, on set and behind the scenes. Uncle Phil even reminisces how easier it was when Hillary was still in her petulant child phase that every time she threw a tantrum or cried loudly, he would give her a bracelet or even some earrings. But now that she is a full-grown adult, she will have to figure these things for herself. And the best piece of advice that Uncle Phil gave to Hillary is that happiness comes from within. Sometimes I'd like to think that this is where the episode should have ended. And of course, this was a moment that was extremely touching to also highlight just how palpable James Avery's and Karen Banks's chemistry was as father and daughter. Another point that I loved so much was Hillary's and Will's relationship, almost like sister and brother. Despite them being cousins, it almost felt like Hillary has grown into that savvy, street smart, and person smart big sister to Will's more charismatic, ebullient, and really charming younger brother. 
to the point where they end up confiding in each other. I know this moment for them is quite general, but that also does highlight just how much Hillary and Will grew almost like siblings. Yes, we all remember Will and Carlton being mostly akin to having this brotherly sibling rivalry, but also having these odd moments of warmth. But in terms of Hillary and Will, they have definitely come so far from Hillary being initially catty towards Will because of his homeboy upbringing to Hillary and Will being more understanding of each other and therefore confiding in each other, thus showing how much Hillary has matured even though she still retains her self-centered snobby personality. But at least she still has heart and at least she and Will continue to click almost like siblings. As this is season 6, there were also some facets that kind of drew it back. Aunt Viv not being present to also give her own heart-to-heart -heart with Hillary. Carlton's and Ashley's constant bickering of whose Christmas decorations for the tree was better. And Will still acting like kind of a buffoon. Boone, especially when he's been acting like this since season one. At least it was still hilarious seeing Jeffrey all drunk on eggnog and Grandma Hattie still being the firm and strong grandmother figure in the house. And all things considered, I O oh Baby Baby was still a fun episode, even though it was kind of not Christmassy enough. And even though it was an episode that kind of had some missed opportunities for Hillary, especially where Aunt Viv's absence was concerned. Receiving a very strong silver medal is Twas the Night Before Christening. And this takes place during Little Nikki's Christening. Yes, it's also told in part flashback where we get to see a five-year-old Nikki played by Gregory Wheeler. And he still does a good job playing Nikki as this inquisitive and charming young lad. Although I would have loved to have Ross Bagley on there just to have some consistency, but I totally digress. Will feels totally left out that his cousins and even Jazz are giving Nikki nicer gifts. What with Carlton having his automated race car and Ashley giving little Nikki a moving stroller that dances around whenever music ends up being played. And even Jazz, Will's best friend, giving little Nikki a Rolex. With the holidays coming underway and even boys to men coming to Bel Air for a visit, especially for touring, Ashley also acquires a signature from boys to men. This even gets to the point where Will exposits that he knew them personally. And the Banks family interpret it as Will bringing boys to men over for Nikki's christening. Even his mother is excited at this very prospect. However, boys to men consisting of Michael McCary, Nathan Morris, Sean Stockman, and Wanye Morris are not really that enthused to see Will because Nathan had a personal history with Will and it was not a pretty one. Once upon a time, Nathan used to be in love with a girl named Nisi, but Will, being the ever-impulsive charmer that he was, ended up winning over Nisi. And of course, he did make some jabs at Nathan's expense, and Nathan was not going to have any of it. Even with Will trying to convince Nisi that Nathan has to help him out and even patch things together with him due to this misunderstanding, as well as Will taking Carlton's Santa Claus outfit to disguise himself as the jolly old man himself to convince boys to men to come over to Lil Nicky's christening, he was still unsuccessful, especially when his disguise was clearly given away and Nathan, Michael, Sean, and Wanye automatically recognize Will. The special guest appearance of Boys to Men consisting of Nathan Morris, Wanye Morris, Sean Stockman, and Michael McCary was a major highlight of in itself, especially when they were singing their four-part harmony versions of Let It Snow and Silent Night. Although this version of Let It Snow is not the one that we're familiar with, but rather a very different version sung by them. And what Michael, Nathan, Sean, and Wanye managed to accomplish as vocalists is nothing short of phenomenal and absolutely beautiful to listen to. Their mastery of harmony and counterpoint, as well as using four-part harmony 
to make their voices blend. These four gentlemen managed to sell this episode for me, and their rendition of Silent Night is absolutely beautiful, absolutely stirring, and truly one of the finest renditions I've ever heard. The other major highlight was Aunt Viv finally revealing who the godparent was going to be for little Nikki. Because initially, Aunt Vi and Aunt Helen were supposed to be the intended godmothers for little Nikki, but that didn't really turn out well, as both Aunt Vi and Aunt Helen ended up bickering with each other, and even snapping some snippy comments at each other in terms of how they dressed, as well as who they thought was going to be the better godmother candidate for little Nikki. And Aunt Viv was having none of that as she finally revealed that Jeffrey was going to be the godfather to little Nikki. Consider this. Poor Jeffrey has been finding himself rather disgruntled throughout the holidays, considering that he has been waiting hand and foot for the Banks family, especially during the holiday seasons. But now is the perfect time to finally assign the role of Godfather to Jeffrey, and even give him a nice Christmas gift that he should be Little Nicky's Godfather. And sure, the whole conflict that Boys to Men had with Will was conveniently resolved, but their guest appearance, as well as their mastery of four-part harmony used in Silent Night and Let It Snow, managed to make them thoroughly shine like the brightest of stars. And of course, Jeffrey's little moment with the five-year-old Nikki managed to be just as sweet and just as charming. And these were reasons why I managed to rank Twas the Night Before Christening quite high. Boys to Men's really wonderful guest appearance, all thanks to their superb musicianship, as well as their interestingly funny batter with Will, managed to make this particular holiday episode strong. And Aunt Viv finally putting her foot down, stating who was going to be the godparent, only revealing it to be Jeffrey, managed to make her win in my eyes, and managed to make both Aunt Vi and Aunt Helen humbled, and even Uncle Phil's narration of what was going on managed to make this episode thoroughly strong in my eyes. While I still loved Twas the Night Before Christening, there were actually two episodes that managed to triumph over both Twas the Night Before Christening and I O Baby Baby combined. And it was impossible for me to choose one over the other because I loved them both the same, although one did lord of the other. And tied for the gold medal were Will's Christmas show being perched atop the metal platform following suit with Deck the Halls. And the reason why was because Will's Christmas show did have a lot more going for it in terms of its story, as well as the character constellations and even the plot tensions that were about to ensue. So starting off with Will's Christmas show, Will, his mother, Aunt Vi, his surrogate family, the Banks family, Uncle Phil, Aunt Viv, Hillary, Carlton, and Ashley, and his relatives, Uncle Lester, Aunt Helen, Bobby, Aunt Janice, and her new husband, Frank, are spending the holidays atop a snowy Utah cabin. The main conflict involves Aunt Janice actually being pregnant given the many times that she was vomiting, and how much closely she managed to be with her new husband, Frank especially that she and Frank got married a few episodes prior. Aunt Janice's pregnancy is also exciting news for the entire family. Aside from Aunt Janice's pregnancy, Aunt Vi is just absolutely giddy considering that she has a new beau in Robert, who will eventually be introduced in the other season two episode, Vying for Attention. Yes, there is that revelry and familial unity in the entire family, However, as Hillary, Will, Carlton, Ashley, and Bobby are left alone, they encounter a stranger all stuck in the snow. Viewers might think that he's innocent given his unassuming look, complete with spectacles. However, he ends up being a thief who robs the entire family blind and ties up all the bank's progeny as well as Will and Bobby. And another asset that made this particular Christmas episode shine in my eyes was the appearance of the proprietor slash police officer slash overall park ranger 
who ends up being a jack of all trades and his dry, witty screen presence managed to make me smile thoroughly. And let's also not forget about Carlton's various attempts at singing solo only to be greeted by having popcorn flung at him, let alone having Ashley totally annoyed that Will should just admit that he loves Carlton like a brother, and even what occurred in the end when Carlton attempted to sing Oh Holy Night in solo, but with the entire family just joining along in the chorus. But the best moment for me comes from the entire family realizing that the gifts are not something that's material, but something that truly comes from the heart, as well as what they could provide to make each other better people. Uncle Lester and Aunt Helen promise to listen to each other a lot more. Aunt Viv promises to be more attentive towards her kids. Hillary pledges to emulate the examples that her mother and her aunts have set her. Will even wants to understand his mother a lot more, and Aunt Vi returns the favor of also giving Will her undivided attention and even reminding him that he will always be her baby, i.e. her number one son through and through. And Uncle Phil makes it his duty to give all of his family his undivided attention. In his usual dry, witty fashion, Jeffrey even states that even though he is British, he will still provide the family warm towels. And you could just leave it up to Jeffrey for delivering that line with dry, witty fun. And the hilarious Gilligan cuts that happen to each of the characters, such as Uncle Lester bragging that he can masters skiing only to find himself being injured that is absolute gold right there but as i stated before what really sold this entire episode for me was the really heartwarming moments that the banks family as well as their relatives had with each other and even their final chorus of oh holy night managed to make this episode win so brilliantly in my eyes. Equally as brilliant was the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air's first Christmas episode, Deck the Halls. And I ranked it just as high as Will's Christmas show because this was not only thoroughly entertaining, but it also had a lot of great hilarious moments from start to finish. From Jeffrey's attempts at making a puppet show of the first day of Christmas, only to be thoroughly disgruntled at why Ashley ended up sleeping and bemoaning the fact that a lot of what he's been doing cannot compete with the quote-unquote tawdry entertainment that he's been seeing from MTV to the new kids on the block. Carlton inviting his Glee Club friends over to rehearse for their Christmas program. And even Will realizing that Ashley didn't really celebrate that much of a Christmas season growing up. And he makes it his mission to make Ashley have the best Christmas ever. And on top of that, Uncle Phil's and Aunt Viv's banter about what is going to occur in the office Christmas party with his lawyers having new wives was just as comedically golden. Another moment worthy of being comedic gold was the moment that Will and Ashley enter an expensive store and encounter a pretentious proprietor slash salesman known as Victor. And he proceeds to make these extravagant claims about certain props and certain decorations being exotic and exquisite. But Will bounces back and realizes that the tawdriness that he has seen is just too much for him and proceeds to roast him saying that their Christmas decorations done the traditional way will be just as amazing and just as thrilling than anything that Victor can ever offer. Uncle Phil's and Aunt Viv's reaction of their wonderfully and brightly decorated house was also worth mentioning, especially when they are just left totally aghast at everything that has occurred. Gone was the more muted poinsettias, as well as the precious crystal representation of the Bethlehem scene, and it was in with all of the bangles, baubles, and all of that bright decoration that have initially irritated the neighbors, 
but the site has also invited the likes of the Evander Holyfield, who even has a rendezvous with Hillary, thus proving that not all of Hillary's contacts seem to have been pulled right out of her ass, but were people that she legitimately met. Even more fun and heartwarming was the appearance of a young Justin Schenkero before his tenure as Harold Berman from Hey Arnold, playing one of the neighborhood kids singing the Christmas carols. And as one of the kids representing the Christmas carolers who search for really great and unique houses, he states that the Banks family mansion, decorated to the nines with all those baubles, bangles, lights, and everything in between, managed to win superbly. And even Ashley has new friends that she can talk to because a good number of Ashley's friends who are her age are usually abroad with their families or even just at home with their families. So it is really nice for Ashley to have a lot of contacts outside her usual Bel Air domain and even her quips of learning new words way advanced for someone who is 10 years old was just as charming and fun and surprisingly relatable in my experience. Furthermore, Ronald Reagan's appearance stating that the Banks family mansion all decorated with lights and all the Christmas decorations was also a huge plus to the point where Will gathers everybody on the television set to watch a classic Christmas commercial and that scene managed to be quite fun to watch, let alone be so heartwarming. Another hilarious moment was Evander Holyfield stating that nobody should be fighting because it's too barbaric, which managed to make me crack a smile. Therefore, combining Will's Christmas show's use of great plot development as well as equally great moments that are so heartwarming and fun, with Deck the Hall's sheer hilarity and amusing use of celebrity cameos, managed to make these two perched atop the metal platform as my number one favorite Christmas episodes of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my personal ranking of which Christmas episode from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air managed to win in my eyes. Sure, I still kind of enjoy I O oh, Baby Baby, and yes, I still find Twas the Night Before Christening absolutely heartwarming and an epic masterpiece considering that Boys to Men managed to sell this episode for me, but they could not even come close to the double team power-ups found in season two's Will's Christmas Show and season one's Deck the Hall. I have to hand it to both Will's Christmas Show and Deck the Halls for making these two episodes an absolute joy to watch. With Will's Christmas Show, it managed to be so full of hilarity, charm, and appropriate amount of tension given the fact that the assuming nice guy turned out to be a scumbag robber. And of course, it's great to see the entire Banks family as well as their relatives together all in one roof. And the fact that the actors managed to play off of each other is absolutely brilliant. Deck the Halls managed to be absolutely hilarious. It managed to make me crack a smile at my face every time I saw the characters on screen, especially when they're interacting with each other. It was also quite fun to see young Justin Schenkero just give an absolutely fine performance as one of the kids stating that the Banks family's mansion won their annual Christmas caroling for the best decoration that they've ever seen, given that the decorations that they would usually see in the Bel Air neighborhood were usually drab. And of course, that memorable moment of Will inviting everybody to watch that old Christmas commercial on the television managed to put a huge smile on my face and managed to make me laugh with glee. And for those of you who caught all four Christmas episodes of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, what'd you think of it? Do you agree with my rankings of making I, O oh, Baby Baby have the bronze medal, having Twas the Night Before Christening have the silver medal, and having both Deck the Halls and Will's Christmas Show attain the gold medal? Do you feel like the episodes should have been ranked differently or do you not agree with my rankings at all? Please let me know in the comments below. Well, that's it for my ranking video of all four Christmas episodes of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. 
tune in next time for yet another holiday-related video. So until then, happy holidays, everybody!